Hello everybody, it's Ascended Mad Haven here today, and today I want to be talking about the Object 703 version 2. This is a tier 8 Russian heavy tank, and honestly, it's one of the most broken tanks I've ever played in the game. I've put 40 matches inside this tank, and my, my W&8 is only 2700 across the board inside this tank. Um, I have been getting a little bit focus fired inside of it because I am playing extremely aggressive. And I've been trying to get in tier 10 games inside this tank. I've specifically been trying to avoid tier 8s as much as possible, except for the replay that you're going to be watching today. It is going to be inside tier 8 because it was one of the better matches I've had. I've had a 7,000 damage match inside this game. I've jumped over to Discord. I've asked a couple of people their opinions on it. And there are a lot of people that all agree this tank is absolutely overpowered. Now, a little bit of a extra little thing here. If you guys play in uh, competitive leagues, uh, keep in mind, Map Fights Battle League, they don't ban any tanks. This tank is still allowed over on Map Fights Battle League. So if you guys do want to have a little bit of a test experience inside of comp, I recommend to go check them out. Um, in all honesty, <laughs> Samurai, please leave a comment down low if people want an invite. I have no idea. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and jump into the statistics here. Now, some of these statistics are off compared to what we're going to be seeing over in the actual game. Uh, give a little bit of context on this. I did remove my premium consumable. I removed all my equipment on this, but I was running optics, power terrain, and enhanced gun lane drive. So if you guys want to copy my build, that's exactly what was on it. Now we're going to go ahead and jump down. Uh, 221 penetration, it's APCR. Uh, 270 heat penetration, and then 61 for your high explosive as I'm rolling stuff over. So if there's like a little, little bit of grain of sand on my desk pad, everything gets really weird. Uh, 390 alpha, giving you 780 total for your alpha burst if you want to do your double shot. Uh, 530 damage on top of this with uh, 1,500 hit points. Really chunky here. Along with that, 38 top speed and 15 reverse speed, making this actually pretty decently mobile compared to most. Uh, 350 view range. You are going to be required to take optics, born leader, um, situational awareness, and a premium consumable to get up to 448 meters of view range. Uh, 445 is the cap at the maximum distance you are allowed to spot targets. However, anything past 445 meters of a view range is considered anti-concealment, so it helps counteract those highly concealed builds. So rather than spotting them out at 240 meters from 445, you actually see them at, let's say, 330 to 340 just depending on what your view range is going to be. Uh, detectability range in this is 423.28. This does drop down as you start to put equipment on it, and it gets a little bit better for your uh, your stationary and your moving. So once you get a crew on this and you get born leader everything else, it's going to be a little bit better. Now, jumping down to this, rate of fire, 4.38 rounds per minute. You're going to be looking at uh, 165 module damage. That's pretty good. That's going to allow some ammo racks if you get the double shots just correctly. 2.49 meters of splash radius for anyone who really cares about splash radius. Uh, 1,708 DPM. You times this by two for 3,216. Um, your shell velocity is 1,150 meters of uh, shell velocity in the APCR, 820 on the heat rounds, and 790 on the high explosives. 13.7 um, second reload. If you're going to be running a crew on this with rapid loading and a premium consumable, you're going to be able to get this down to 11.1 seconds. That way, both guns are at 11.1. And if you time it correctly, since this tank does not cancel a reload as it's reloading because each gun is independent of one another, uh, which does make this tank a little bit broken in my opinion, you can fire it as fast as a Chieftain if you really wanted to, or you can compare it to, let's say, like the E50M for alpha rating and then with a faster reload in terms of damage output per minute. So this thing does get a little bit ridiculous. 3.5 aim time. I do run enhanced gun lane drive, which does drop this down to 2.83 or 2.85. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. You have 40 rounds of ammunition, 0.44 accuracy, but if you're going to be running uh, steady aim, snapshot, born leader, all the others, you can be able to get it down to 0.36. Uh, you are going to be able to get it better if you wanted to, but personally, I don't see the benefits of running a vertical stabilizer because compared to the base accuracy of 0.53 on during turret rotation for how slow the turret is the enhanced gun lane drive will help counteract this uh, accuracy as long as you give it that extra half second to kind of click in a tad bit five degrees of gun depression 18 degrees of elevation and then your turret armor you're going to be looking at 220 with 120 in the sides 90 millimeters in the rear the top of the turret up in the forehead we're going to be taking a look at that or in a second is uh, 50 millimeter stick so watch out for 152 millimeter guns uh, not to mention, if you're shooting it in the face, it's going to be real easy to pin with at least 280 millimeters of uh, penetration from APCR. And 270 millimeters of AP, it will just tear through this like it's paper because it's effective 253 millimeters. 
but if you max out gun depression, everything else. Uh, 26 degrees on the turret rotation, on the hall rotation here. Now, did I pass the turret? I did, 20 degrees per second. You can get this up to 23.83 if you're going to be running uh, Rapid Aim and a couple others. I did test out a couple of builds on this during the time I played it. Basically, it was every single 10 games. I reset my crew, and then I did something else. I came back to it. Yada, yada, yada. Traded out a couple of crews, and you, you get the gist of it. It was fun. <laughs> Terrain resistance of 1, 1.1, 1 .1, and then 2. I do recommend taking off-road driving on this to help get this a little bit lower. That 2 on soft terrain really kills this tank, and there's a lot of soft terrain in the map right now. Uh, signal range of 730. That's for assist damage. Anything past that, you're not going to be benefiting from the assist, unfortunately. And this is a black version of the tank, so you are going to be getting an additional 75% on your um, experience bonus. If you're going to be buying this in the base variant, Rather than the black version, this is going to be 100%, but you're still going to have the 50% additional total on your silver earn rate. 5% uh, global earn XP, yada, yada, yada. Crew training, it's 100%, standard crew training. Anyways, jumping into the armor, we're going to be comparing this to itself real fast, 240. Let's max out the gun depression real quick. Let's actually go from the front with maxed out as I struggle to get it. There we go. Face this all the way at you. This is 280 millimeters, and this is what I meant by like 280 APCR is going to be able to go through this without much of an issue. Now, let's compare this to the Charlemagne, which is going to be something else. But before that, let's go ahead and jump into heat rounds, uh, 289 millimeters. So against anything that has 300 millimeters plus of heat penetration, they're going to be able to go through your front if, you, if you're going haul down. Side of your turrets, you got this entire area is real easy pin with 300 millimeters. It basically your cheeks get really weak and if you're struggling to do that you can aim right down the center of the gun or pretty much anywhere around the sides of the gun mantle and from the front it's 230 millimeter stick so it's an easy penetration the hatches on the other hand they are very difficult to hit and they're 180 millimeters thick jumping out to 170 this is 100 millimeters of side armor and there is no under armor to overmatch if this is pulling over a hill or anything else so there's no track and damage shots that you can pull off against this tank due to the fact that it's just going to be auto ricochet the entire time as long as they're coming over the hill correctly so that's something to keep in mind there's a lot of tanks with under armor that you can penetrate and damage and permanently track them while dealing consistent damage um i probably have a lot of gameplay clips that show it off now going against the charlemagne so a tier 8 heavy british tank uh it has a 270 millimeter ap penetration round which is going to then lower this armor down to 260, whenever you're using maximum gun depression, 250 millimeters of effective armor in the front. If you're going to be coming over a hill or firing at opponents, your best bet is always to slightly get a better angle as you're coming over or around anything. You always want to make sure that you're approaching enemies at an angle with your top plate. If you see people coming at you front and they're trying to use max gun depression over the front of this tank, you are going to be able to punish them consistently by just shooting into the top plate with a very decent AP round or high enough penetration of AP. Against heat rounds, this tank is going to be pretty decent against just because this is effective armor against heat, especially if you're coming up at an angle. And, I mean, in all honesty, the Kree of Etz is an absolute beast of a tank, and it's a super big monster. You got 60 millimeters of armor in the rear, so it's going to be, there's not going to be a lot of tanks that are going to be able to penetrate you in the rear with high explosives. Uh, the back of your turret, uh, it's decent all around. I mean, this is against premium. Then again, you know, if you're getting shot in the back, you do have auto ricochet angles off the rear, so sometimes you'll be able to get some random auto ricochets coming around. And then if you guys want to have a little bit of a better idea here, 240 going all across the side here, you can kind of do a little bit of awkward angles in this pulling and try and bait shots into the side of your turret. But it is risky because you are exposing a giant weak spot right here in the front right. And this is something that I've been trying to do because I do a lot of brawling and this is a really fun tank to brawl in. Um, I have over 200 matches in it on PC as well. Now, something to keep in mind about this tank is the ammo rack locations. They are underneath the turret and in the back of the turret. So these are positions that, let's say they're side scraping. If you splash them in the side with the high explosive, it's going to be a lot easier to, you know, possibly damage the ammo rack. If you're facing it from the front, aiming for the right side, the right side is actually a lot more consistent than it is on the left side. The left side, I haven't really felt it be ammo racked as much there, but... Shooting it from the right, I do feel like I ammo rack it quite a bit on that right side compared to the left. The back of the turret, though, um, if you guys want to get a view on the angles there, you can check it out on the armor viewer for yourself and get an idea for it in-game. So, other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the replay. Actually, before we jump into the replay, there's one thing 
that you can do to really help me out. Drop a like on this video if you guys are enjoying it or whatever it is. Leave a comment down in the comment section. It helps out a lot. Seriously, put a, put a like down. I, I would appreciate it. I'll, I'll give you a head pat if that makes you feel better about it. <laughs> and, and other than that, I'm done making a fool of myself. Now, the first match, well, actually, the only match I'm going to be showing off is on Sunset Coast. You know, the not-so-fun variant of Airfield. A lot of people are not exactly big fans of this one. For me, I enjoy it. It's not super bad. There's, it, it, It's been around for a long time. They could probably redesign it a little bit. Then again, a lot of the maps could use a little bit of redesigning. But Sunset Coast is not bad. Now, in the time that I've been playing the 703 version 2, the fact that there is no interrupts on the reload like PC. I mean, if you do a double shot, you do have an interclip reload of 5 seconds. So it does kind of prevent you from just having that immediate 10 second reload. So if you perform a double, double shot, you are hit with a little bit of a penalty for 15 seconds to 16.10 seconds to get that shell back inside the tank. And that's kind of where the problem is going to be running into. Just because... You do the double, and there's not really a real big penalty to it because each gun is independent of one another, and you're capable of firing left and right with, without really caring a whole lot. But I do recommend staying inside the single shot if you need to do a double shot because you want to catch somebody out trying to leave an area. Uh, double shots are definitely worth it if you're doing that. For instance, if you only have a couple of seconds that you're going to see a target, performing a double shot and throwing out the 780 alpha could be beneficial to try and knock off some hit points before they disappear and you don't see them again. Um, depending on the scenario that you're in, if a tank's out in the open, I find that the single shot was working a lot better just because you're capable of permanently tracking them, uh, depending on their crew training and everything else that they have on it. If they're running re toolbox, I had a couple of guys running toolbox on this and they were playing really aggressive in close quarters combat. And having that three second repair time on the tracks did kind of make things a little bit intense for them instead of a couple of the matches, just because even against tier 10s, it's like having that repair speed with a power terrain combined with it. You were just capable of moving like no other, and it was really hard to lock you down consistently. Now, balance of the game? This thing is not balanced in the slightest. Um, my first match inside this tank honestly made my head spin and <laughs> at neck-breaking speeds. So, yeah, talk about that. It It is... I, I, I mean, I've been playing World of Tanks for a long time. Yeah, 666, there's that low roll. I've been playing World of Tanks for a long time, and I've played a lot of overpowered tanks in, in my day. And whenever it comes down to it, this is hands down. Actually, no, I would say the Sin Lack is hands down one of the most broken tanks I've played. Uh, you you were capable of getting 8,300 DPM on that tank. Uh, but then again, this thing would technically one-shot it. Uh, <laughs> back then so I mean technically this thing is absolutely ridiculous in all honesty um, I feel like this thing was not balanced appropriately before being added to the game it it just it wasn't ready the one over on PC I'm I actually enjoy the one over on PC because you get punished for firing in between reloads because it will cancel that reload and then it will start to do you know like it cancels the reload so you only load one shell at a time so if you fire you lose that shell now, in scenarios like this, I mean, take a look at how I'm doing my reload. I waited a little bit until the 5 seconds left on reload, and then the interclip hit with 5 seconds left. And I'm not really utilizing my DPM fully here. I'm actually trying to just bait shells in that lower plate, that 90 millimeters of lower plate armor. Uh, which is super awesome. Krivitz is amazing. I don't care. That, that tank is one of my favorites. Um, now, talking about just how abusive this tank is. The armor on it and everything else, I understand that it's a newer tank, but the hull's not newer. The turret is newer. So there's going to be a lot of people that don't know where to aim at it or anything else. So currently, it is performing extremely well, but as time goes on, this tank will kind of find its own little spot due to its popularity. Um, there's there's a couple things for it that it will soon kind of find this position that it's, it, it, it hits and it doesn't. Uh, for me, it's been kind of a 50-50 with my 42.5% win rate inside the tank over the course of 40 matches. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it either way. But I, I'm still blown away that they would add in something this powerful into the game. Because I was... <laughs> I can't remember who I was talking to. But currently, at release of this tank, I believe the 3 mark damage standing 
is above 5,000 damage, if I heard it correctly. Um, so far over in Watt Stars, they have not yet updated it, so I do not know for sure what it actually is. I haven't been checking my damage standing or anything else, and I'm sorry about people yelling in the background. But it's just a little bit ridiculous. I mean, it, the balance of the game has been thrown out the window with this. It's almost like a crack addict with a bad habit. You know, just trying to get back at it. And me, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a rough time trying to do it just because I left the game originally because they weren't balancing things correctly. For instance, this is 11.5 second reload and you're capable of having two guns, yet all the 360 alpha guns in the game are nothing compared to 390 guns. Their reloads are technically the same in output and everything else, except for this one. But the thing is, this has got two. The E75TS has got one. Where's my eight second reload of my E75TS, please? I would love that so much. Uh, it, it just ridiculous. So far up to 5,970 blocks, 6,000 damage dealt, and 125 assisted points. The assist really matters here. Uh, unfortunately, I should have taken a shot at the EBR Hosh and then just kept my distance from the uh, Malbreacher, but he backed up and, you know, he loved, he loved tapped me and I died. Unfortunate. Uh, but it is what it is and it's how it goes. It's completely fine though. 6,672 dealt, 6,750 damage ricocheted. That was the entire reason why I decided to choose this replay to show it off because the damage dealt and then the ricochet count, when this thing is top tier, it is not a tier 8. This is a tier 9 for the damage output. Uh, almost equivalent to tier 10s. Even on a loss, I still took MVP. I mean, this thing is absolutely bonkers. A first class mastery for 6,000 damage. If this would have been a win, uh, that would have been a mastery badge. I have gotten a mastery badge on the tank, but this was the replay I chose to show off because uh, this, this was in fact, yes, the one. Now... I think it's a little bit ridiculous how this tank has been lined up. Um, I <laughs> I also hate the fact that I, I sell equipment for half the price and then I have to pay full price to get it back. So, you know, it, 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 this video cost me 750,000 silver, which in all honesty is not a whole lot of matches to play. Uh, they've been very generous in matches and giving out silver and everything else. In all honesty, I'm just going to say it. World of Tanks console is not bad. If anything, our devs are actually really cool people. I kind of feel bad that they're kicking a lot of people out of these super tests and everything else due to really stupid things. I've been hearing some weird stories as of recent. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. I would love to be a part of it. I would love to test. I would love to jump in and give my feedback. But you see, having three days to do so is not a lot of time for anyone to be able to say anything about a tank because it's three days. It, for crying out loud, it took me nine days to put the matches inside this tank to be able to give you guys a review and go over it and ask people how they felt about it just before I decided to make my own video on it. Now, they are very generous. They give out a lot of tanks. Um, during the time that I played, seven months ago, maybe a little bit prior to that, they gave out the M48 ROM Ponzer. Literally gave it to everyone. Like you could have been, it could have been your first day on the game, and they gave it to you. They're very generous devs, and I may seem like a mean guy at times, but in all honesty, I want to turn over a new leaf because I think you guys are actually really cool. Because I've been playing a lot of other games. I love to play other games. I love the, I love to break mechanics of other games. For crying aloud, I now hold the world record over on Halo Wars 2 for the firefight for the highest score multipliers ever done. Period. <laughs> I mean, that took four months for me to be able to achieve, but we put in the work and we got it. And it's now an achievement that I'm probably, I'm, I'm gonna brag about it because i earned the right to brag about that that was four months of practice a hard dedicated practice um i enjoy world of tanks i love to go over mechanics and everything else but this tank this thing is broken i don't care what anyone says this tank is ridiculously overpowered it might find a spot i have no idea but they do need to make it to where if you fire one gun the other one cancels the reload uh, there was a, probably a couple better ways of doing this, making it like a projetto and then having you can activate dual and then it forces out two shells rather than one. And then they're both bye-bye, just full clip out instead of just having two independent using the multi-weapon system loadout, which I kind of feel like took away from it. Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. I will catch you guys in the next one. And I'm going to continue being a Muppet like I always am.
because that's just me.